Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is Thierry Carrez. I'm the Release Cycle Management PTL, uh, which means I'm leading the team that is working on Release Cycle Management things. And if we look at the next slide, um, you'll see that we usually described Release Cycle Management like this. Like six months ago, I would have said we do integrated release management. We do the coordinated release at the end of the cycle where we, uh, we produce on time the, the set of projects that were part of the integrated release. We do stable branch maintenance, and we also uh, oversee over, um, we also looked over the team that does vulnerability management in, uh, in, in OpenStack. Uh, but that changed a lot in the, in the new cycle, and on the next slide you can see that there are a few words that are crossed. Um, and the, the, the reason for that is we we pushed a number of changes uh, in, in the governance of the project. On the next slide, you can see that uh, there was uh, a project structure reform in, in, that was put in place during the keto cycle. And it can basically be summarized as uh, big tent and tags. The big tent uh, side of things is that we are now recognizing projects as being part of OpenStack if they help with the OpenStack mission and if they are developed in the OpenStack way, which is way more inclusive than uh, the previous way of describing OpenStack more as an integrated release, uh, a single product. Now it's more like a collection of projects that all help in the same problem space and are all developed with the same values. Um, the second part of the reform is that while we're we're adding more projects uh, uh, inside OpenStack. We are also providing clearer information about those projects and, and um, be more precise, provide more precise answers to the questions that our uh, downstream consumers of that ecosystem will, um, will have. So um, rather than have a single answer uh, and say, well, you're part of the integrated release or you're not part of the integrated release, we are now providing a much uh, richer uh, explanation of where a project does fit in, in the ecosystem and, and what type of attribute it has. Um, so that project structure reform basically created a few, a, few, um, a few differences. One of them is that it's way easier to uh, create project teams now in OpenStack than it used to be. So on the next slide, you can see that uh, we've been forming a new team dedicated to security um, called the OpenStack Security Team, and that's the reunion of the previously called OpenStack Security Group, which was a, um, a set of experts working on, on security um, architecture in, in OpenStack, and the Vulnerability Management Team, which was part of the Release Cycle Management Team, um, and that team handles incident vulnerabilities and makes sure that we issue patches for uh, vulnerabilities found in in uh, OpenStack projects. So those two were pretty linked. They were acting pretty close, uh, but they were not an, op um, an official OpenStack team until, until the big tent was, was uh, set up. So now we have a single team called the OpenStack Security Team, which is uh, led by um, uh, Robert Clark. And that team is, is has two subgroups, the, the, the previous OpenStack security group and the vulnerability management team. And they all have a single portal that lives at security.openstack.org. So if you're interested in security things, that's your, uh, your way to go. So it's no longer part of the release management team. That's one of the changes we've made. Uh, the second change on the next slide is that we no longer have an integrated release per se. Uh, the, we no longer have this closed set of projects that make up the OpenStack product release every six months. We have a larger collection of projects uh, that are all OpenStack projects. There's still uh, a coordinated release at the end of a six months development cycle though. Um, you, there will still be an OpenStack release at the end of the Liberty cycle that we're we are currently in. Uh, but it's more um, an opt-in release for all the projects in OpenStack that make up a make a release at the end of the cycle. They can be part of this 
uh, coordinated release at the end of the cycle. It's no longer a, a closed set that is excluding um, um, most projects from being from appearing inside the inside the project deliverables. Uh, we are also working on refining processes and tools so that they they are more self-service. Um, since we'll have to support a lot more projects, uh, we also need to make sure that it's way easier to do releases and, and to do them in a very uh, uh, common and streamlined way. Um, so we're working a lot on, on the tools, on the processes, so that uh, every project can be more uh, uh, independent in the ways they're, they're, they're doing their releases. And what binds them all is the development cycle. We still do a six months long development cycle. We are still organizing our development uh, of the development of OpenStack projects in six months increments, and that's what what binds all the all the, all those projects together. Uh, next slide, we're we're seeing another change that we need to push in Liberty, which is we are switching release tracking from predicting to reporting. Um, we used to try to predict what features and what, uh, um, I mean, wh what is being worked on and when that will land in the next cycle. And during the last few cycles, it was, it was pretty unreliable. Uh, we, we did a pretty bad job at trying to predict what would be in a given milestone and in a given version of, of the software. So rather than doing a very bad job at trying to predict what will be in the next milestone, next development milestones, and next releases, uh, we decided to do a much better job at reporting what uh, was actually done during those milestones. And let's put, uh, let uh, groups that are more focused on, on the long-term view, like the product managers that are uh, uh, working on, on uh, trying to get the, the a more roadmap-like approach to what gets done in OpenStack, give, let those people uh, actually work on, on predicting the trends and the f next future, next priorities for the, for the development. So as far as release management goes, we're only tracking what gets done rather than uh, trying to predict what will get done, which makes our job a lot easier so we can replace the sync points we had with the PTLs every week with um, with office hours, um, so the PTLs and the release liaisons for each project can uh, join us during uh, office hours and ask questions they have about release management, rather than have set sync points every week, which was extremely time consuming for uh, the release management team. We also have a new page at uh, status.openstack.org that re slash release, which uh, um, shows this new report, new uh, release tracking report, and shows all the features that, have, that are being um, already landed in the current development cycle and what is, uh, what is in, the, in the pipeline coming up. Uh, next slide. Yes, so Liberty Release Management, we, we have a number of changes we need to push due to the, that, that switch to um, not having an integrated release anymore. So we, we support more release models than we used to. Um, a lot of projects want to now uh, follow on the footsteps of Swift and uh, do intermediary releases uh, in the middle of the cycle. And so we are enabling them to do so. It's, it's a natural consequence of projects getting more mature and more stable. Uh, you can actually release more often and deliver new features to your user base rather than um, have to wait for six months uh, at the end of the cycle. We are, um, to that effect, we're, pro we're pushing for a separate versioning for components. Um, that means since every project will be able to uh, do intermedi intermediary releases, uh, we need to have version numbers that enable them to do so. So rather than have this date-based Number, uh, version numbers that we had previously, like 2015.1. Uh, we recently switched all projects to um, uh, a new major version number. 
based on the number of integrated releases they had in the past. Uh, so the next Nova release, for example, will not be 2015.2, but 12.00. And that's, um, that will let projects evolve at their own pace rather than the time-based pace and will be more precise for um, uh, going forward. We'll have uh, more, uh, 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 each project will be able to switch to a, a version number that describes better the number of releases that they are making. We are working on streamlining the library release process, which used to be a bit of a mess. Uh, every project was releasing libraries, announcing them, maybe not announcing them, um, sometimes breaking other projects because they weren't releasing at the right moment. So we're, uh, the release management team is expanding so that we can release, uh, handle the process of, of tagging new library releases and, and um, ensure that all the, all the process is followed along the way. Uh, next slide, we, yes. So if in, in summary, in the Liberty development cycle, you will have projects following a six month time-based cycle, and those will have a, a number of development milestones. Uh, the first one is this week um, on Thursday. Uh, the next one is at the end of July. And the third one will be um, uh, September 3rd, and that coincides with feature freeze for those projects. Then they will do release candidates like we always did. Uh, up to a final release on October 15, 2015. And at the same time, we'll have projects like Swift and Ironic, maybe others, that will do releases, intermediary releases as needed. And they will do a final Liberty release, which will also be included in this final release of the Liberty cycle on October 15. Um, so you can, you can see that you'll have projects on one side that are more traditionally uh, uh, in very active development mode that can only do development milestones during the six month cycle and projects that are slightly more mature, which can uh, do uh, more usable intermediary releases and, and um, will have a final, a final release on, in October as well. Uh, next slide. So we, what makes that final release different is that we'll have a stable branch out of it. That means we'll maintain a branch where we can push backports of bug fixes, important bug fixes, vulnerabilities. And only this final release, the final release of the Liberty Cycle will, will be supported like this. So if you have intermediary releases and you install them, uh, you don't have the additional comfort of having a stable branch that you can get uh, um, critical bug fixes out of. Those stable branch, there will only be one per development cycle, like I just said. Um, we also have a single stable branch policy across them. We have a team which ensures that uh, only appropriate fixes are uh, merged into those branches. Uh, we make sure that we don't break backwards compatibility, that we don't add new, um, new configuration options, we don't add new features, we, don't, um, we make sure we don't change the database structure. So those uh, fixes are relatively safe to, to apply. Um, we have been questioning the interest of doing stable point releases after uh, on those stable branches. Um, we traditionally did uh, at moment in time, like two months after, uh, after the kilo release, we planned to have uh, um, a kilo point one, basically, uh, um, uh, um, a tag for all the projects that were part of the integrated release um, to, to mark the passage of time, basically. And we don't think that has that much value anymore, and it's becoming more costly to, to organize due to uh, having a lot more projects uh, that do stable branches. So um, it's still, still being discussed on the mailing list, but we might switch to just maintaining stable branches rather than um, rather than doing, uh, also doing stable point releases as well. As far as stable branch support phase go, um, Juno will be supported until the Liberty release, so that's 12 months. 
And for the kilo release, the current plan is to support it for nine months. Uh, and the reason why is we have a pretty uh, complex setup for handling requirements around stable branches. We hope to make fast progress in fixing that in the, in the upcoming cycle. If we do fix it, then we'll be able to extend the kilo support period, the kilo stable branch period uh, up to 12 or 15 months. But um, the current plan is to play it safe safe and announce that we'll support it for nine months unless we manage to fix the world. Okay, do, do I have a next slide? No, that's, that's all. <laughs> so that's all for release management. It's more changes than we used to do. Uh, and like I said, we've been, uh, we've been ramping up uh, new members in the team. Doug Elman has been joining as, uh, as co-release manager for this cycle. Uh, we have a number of library release managers working on on that streamlining library release process. And so that's a lot more than I used to present on those uh, PTL webinars. I hope you found it interesting and see you probably in six months. <laughs>